Hi everyone. Welcome to the video lecture series of Object Oriented Programming. In this lecture, we will be discussing about the topic named Use Case Model. We have discussed about UML diagrams and we came to know that UML diagram is actually a collection of nine diagrams or in other words we can say UML diagrams means it consists of so many diagrams. One among those diagram is known as use case diagrams. So in this video lecture we will be generally introducing use case diagrams. So what is this use case model or what is this use case diagrams? As I have mentioned in the beginning, UML diagrams is a collection of nine diagrams. So it is not necessary to use all the nine diagrams to draw a model. Depending upon the model we need, we can decide which among those nine diagrams we have to use. That is why we are studying all these diagrams one by one. So first of all we will see what is a use case model or a use case diagram and when we have to use that. So the basic definition of a use case model. We can define a use case model as a set of use cases. So since we can define a use case model as a set of use cases we must know what is the meaning of a use case or what does a use case represent. A use case represent the different ways in which a system can be used by the users. That means the same system can be used by different users. For example, consider an ATM machine. We all use ATM machine to withdraw cash. But at the same time, the same machine is used by the corresponding bank personalities to insert cash. So whatever may be the system, that we can view every system in different viewpoints. For example, consider another example, our website, college website. When some personalities view it, when some other people view the website, they see so many images, so many links and they can view the departments. When they click on any, any department name, the corresponding web page will be loaded, everything etc. etc. But there is an admin side view of that website. That is, it is viewed by those people who created that website. When, they, uh, when the people who created that website views that web page, they know how that uh, how that link appears on the page, how that is going to work, how they can modify it, etc, etc. So the same system can be viewed in different viewpoints. So how the same system can be represented, or how we can represent the same system in different viewpoints, that is what this use case model explains. So when we draw the use case diagram of a system, it always represents the high level functionalities because we will not explain how each of those things are done or how each of those things are implemented. For example, when we go to the ATM, uh, nowadays we can withdraw the cash as well as we can deposit the cash also. If it is a CDM machine, cash, cash deposit machine also. If it is both ATM and cash deposit machine, then we can deposit money also. But how those functionalities work? When we withdraw some cash, how it is being deducted from our account? How that linking between the ATM machine and our account happens? We don't know any of those implementation details. So we will be drawing or we will be representing only the high level requirements of a system by using use cases. So when we use or when we draw a use case of a diagram, we are actually partitioning the behavior. We are actually dividing the system behavior into transactions. Okay. 
and what is the importance of, importance of those transactions. Each transaction performs some useful action from the user's point of view. So we can consider a use case system or the use case diagram as a set of use cases and transactions. So we are dividing the entire system behavior into so many transactions. Each transaction will be performing some useful actions when it is uh, when it is viewed from the user's point of view. Okay, and when we say a transaction, if a transaction needs to be completed, it may involve multiple message exchanges. For example, if we want to withdraw cash from an ATM, we need to swipe the card, enter the password, we have to type the amount we need to withdraw, then we have to click on the withdraw button, then we have to collect cash. So even if the transaction is to withdraw the cash, these many actions have to take place. So to complete one transaction, there may be more than one messages involved or message exchanges involved. It may not be a single message exchange or single action. There can be a sequence of actions involved to complete one transaction. Okay. So when we draw the use case diagram, these things we have to take care of or we must keep in keep these things in our mind. We should not specify any algorithm that we are going to use to implement something. We should not represent any internal data and we should not represent the internal structure of a software. Okay. So these three things are not mentioned by a use case diagram. So when we draw a use case diagram, these things should not be there. Okay. So use case diagram overall represents how a particular user will be using a system. When the user performs one transaction, which all messages has to be converted or has to be uh, exchanged between the different parts of a system, how that, how that transaction can be completed, all those things can be shown but by using which algorithm we are going to implement that or what is the internally what happens when the user performs one action those things should not be reflected in a use case diagram so a use case model it involves sequ sequence of interactions and interactions always takes place between the user and the system user means those who are using the system Okay, and it consists of one main line sequence and several alternate sequences. Okay, main line sequence means when we represent a system, there will be a main purpose for that system that is known as a main line sequence. For example, when we talk about ATM, its main line sequence is to withdraw cash. We know that ATMs are used to withdraw cash, so its main line sequences or main purposes. To withdraw cash but along with that main sequence line that is we uh, every time when we swipe a card and we enter the password we won't be we, we won't be able to get cash from ATM due to several reasons we may be typing the wrong password there may not be enough cash in the ATM because of several reasons we may not be able to withdraw the cash so all those are alternate sequences or those things are we uh, those, those things are known as alternate sequences. Okay, so in general, a use case consists of a main line sequence and several alternate sequences. Okay, so main line sequence is what that is generally represents the operation of the system. That is the general interaction between the user and system. What is the general purpose of the system and how it is done by using a user? How it is how they are interaction how that interaction takes place between the user and the system. That is known as main line sequence. So we can define main line sequence in different ways. This is one definition. It represents the interactions between a user and the system that normally take place. Or we can also define it as the most frequently occurring sequence of interaction. That is what we mean by this main line sequence. I have mentioned this example again. I will just explain once again. That is, we are considering our ATM 
as our example. So if we consider ATM, the main line sequence is withdraw cash because we know that the ATMs are used to do withdraw cash. So that main line sequence in includes all these messages. Okay, user inserts the ATM card or messages means all these actions. Inserts the card, enter the password, select the amount to be withdraw, then enters the amount to be withdrawn, then completes the transaction, collects the amount. So even the main line sequence is withdrawing cash. All these actions must take place to happen uh, to withdraw some amount from ATM. So this is the main line sequence of our ATM system. So there can be several variations depending upon several conditions. Or we can say that when particular conditions are met, the main line sequence may change its root of or it may change its root of execution. For example, when we are entering some wrong password, the main line sequence was to withdraw cash from ATM. But we unfortunately we forgot our password, we, uh, we forgot our ATM pin. We entered some wrong pin. So we are actually deviating from the main line sequence because of some condition. The con in this example, the condition is wrong password. We entered the wrong password, so we cannot continue further. So in the main line sequence, so we are deviating from the main line sequence and we will get a wrong message saying, saying that wrong pin. We have entered wrong pin. So generally, a deviation in the main line sequence when, sub, when certain conditions are met, those are known as alternate sequence. Okay. So in this, in the case of ATM, we can consider two examples when we are entering a wrong password or else our account does not contain enough amount or the amount that we typed to withdraw if it is more than the account balance. In both of these cases, it is actually deviating from the main line sequence. Okay. So all together, the main line sequence and each of the alternate sequences corresponding to the invocation of a use case is called a scenario of the use case. So that is the definition for a scenario of the use case. That means all the, the main line sequence and all the alternate sequences combined together. We call both main line sequence and alternate sequence together the scenario of the use case. So we shall conclude this video lecture. So in this video lecture, we discussed about the use case diagram. It is one of the UML diagram. UML diagram is actually a collection of several diagrams, among which one is use case diagram. So use case diagram is used to represent the viewpoint of users. Users means all those people who uses a system. And system means our software or our product, whichever or whatever thing our user is going to interact with. And we know we, we discussed about which or what all things must be included and what all things should not be there inside a use case diagram. We defined what is scenario. We also defined what's a main line sequence and what are alternate sequences. So that is and we also saw one example. We haven't discussed about drawing a use case model or use case diagram that we will cover in the next video lecture. In this video lecture, we generally introduced use case diagram. Thank you so much.